Welcome to Sunday Night Live on Mothering Sunday, when we'll be giving thanks for all our mums. The mum who's bringing Bible stories alive for a generation of children who love Minecraft. We meet Naomi in the Sudan, 25 years old and already a mum to five children and her extended family. Recently widowed with a son disabled at birth, why this inspirational vicar loves being a mum. And making sure good Christian books reach the people who need them most. And if you find the programme today interesting and enjoyable, please remember to press the subscribe and the like buttons so that you'll be reminded of the programme next week and more people will get the chance to watch it. Hello again from me, Pam Rhodes, on Mothering Sunday, that red letter day in the annual calendar. But you know, later on this week, on Wednesday, the 17th of March, well, people around the world will be celebrating in 40 shades of green because, of course, it's St Patrick's Day, the patron saint of Ireland. So let's start with that evocative, very moving virtual recording that was created by Christians from more than 300 churches and organisations across every county of Ireland during lockdown. It's based on the words of that much-loved Irish hymn, Be Thou My Vision, Here's the Irish Blessing.
If you weren't actually dancing to that, I bet you were at least tapping your toe. That was the Irish blessing. Now, when Becky Dybel, who is a vicar in Sawtree in Cambridgeshire, saw how much fun her husband and her young son were having together as they played Minecraft, which of course is an incredibly popular computer game at the moment, it gave her an idea. Why not use Minecraft to help her with her job, which is to find a way to make Bible stories really enjoyable for a computer generation? I work with my local school doing collective worship. It's a Church of England school and we have a commitment that I will do collective worship with them every other week. We do a pattern that involves prayer, Bible, reading, a bit of study, often singing and we close with a prayer and those prayers are familiar to all of the children because they created them they wrote them um, and also the lord's prayer is a vital part of our gathering of worship together in retelling some of the bible stories i was looking for a new different way a way that would really complement and work well on zoom and through youtube and there are other priests that and youth workers that have been using Minecraft and Lego and other gaming online and offline technologies to help create this innovative and exciting way to engage in that gospel message, that good news, that hope through gaming. And my son Noah and my husband Alex love Minecraft. It's a world that I've never really been able to get into properly. But this was a really lovely opportunity for me to talk to them, to explore this world that they have together. And I made a throwaway comment that was, could you maybe help me tell the story of Jesus walking on the water? And they were like, yeah, they could do that. And they got really excited and animated. And it felt like a very natural progress. So I would do the narration and they would then do the animation around it. And it slowly but surely grew. And we got the Bishop of Ely to join us. And he helped tell one of those stories. And it was just a really lovely opportunity for us as a family to work together, but also to share that hope, that joy, the promise and love that's offered through the Gospels in particular with the children at the school. One of the things that I do fairly regularly is go into the school and I will often take with me different Bibles and I will sit on the bench at uh, playgrounds or maybe in the classroom and they will have an opportunity as pupils to explore these different stories that maybe some of them are familiar with, but some of them aren't in a format that is really relevant to them. So um, there's the Magna Bible, there's the Action Bible, the Lego Bible. Um, you've also got the Minecraft Bible and all of those Bibles help inspire this thinking and creative um, way of viewing the Bible. I'm really looking forward to how we might be able to use it and as a family we've really enjoyed doing it and we're now looking at how we can create the Bible in Minecraft um, and using 
and inspired by what people have done before. There's heaps on YouTube. There is just so much out there already that even if you are not able to create it yourself, if you're looking at an opportunity to maybe engage with your children or your grandchildren, or you are looking to engage in schools, then actually suggesting this material to them, watching it and saying, oh, that's a really good take on that story and sharing it with people. It's been a really great opportunity and I'm yeah I'm excited by what's possible when you're able to see God working powerfully through the scriptures. Hill is the mother of four grown-up children and has two grandchildren, perfect qualifications for her other role as the UK director of the well-known charity Care for the Family that promotes strong family life and helps people who are facing family difficulties. Well, she's drawn on all of that experience to write this book, A Mind of Their Own, which suggests ways in which parents can nurture their children's resilience and emotional well-being. It's great to have Catherine with us on this special Mothering Sunday. Now, of course, we won't all be mothers. And whilst for some it's a day of celebration, for others, because of the complexity of family life, it's a difficult day. But even if the relationship hasn't been easy, even if our mothers are no longer alive, we've all had a mother and we've all been a child. And perhaps thinking about the role of mothers today is especially poignant in these difficult times that we're living in, because there will have been pressure on our relationships, on our health, on our finances, and for many, the trauma and grief of bereavement. Some may have lost a mother or even a grandmother to the virus. So today may be a sad day for some, a day to look back in gratitude, but also a reminder of what has been lost. But it is also a day to celebrate and to thank the mothers and those that have a mother's heart in our community. 
this season has been really tough for mothers. So many have gone the extra mile in holding families together through the crisis, juggling homeschooling and homeworking. In fact, I spoke to one mum just last week and she said the hardest thing about lockdown has been trying to manage my own emotions. She said, I can't tell you the number of times I've locked myself in the loo and had a good cry. There's been nowhere to hide. And I know she's not alone in that. Now, the story is told of a farmyard fire that began in a barn and swiftly spread, causing devastation. The farmer tried to save the animals, but the mother hen and her chickens, they had nowhere to hide. And as the farmer walked through the yard the next morning, he looked at the damage and he saw the charred remains of the mother hen. And as he bent to pick it up, he felt something move and underneath her four chickens were sheltering, still alive. And they'd run to her in time of danger. And she had protected them. She'd kept them safe. Now, there are so many images of God in the Bible, but one of my favourites is the image of him as a mother. Looking over the city of Jerusalem, Jesus says uh, these beautiful words, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a, a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And David also uses this beautiful image uh, in the Psalms when he writes this. Have mercy on me, O God. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster is past. David writes this at a time of incredible pressure. He was a fighter. King Saul was chasing him, trying to kill him. He was on the run and he'd taken refuge in a cave. And he writes these words saying, God, I've fought long and hard. I can't go on. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Many of us today may feel like David. We've been fighting long and hard. The last year has been tough and we need to take refuge in the shadow of his wings. Susanna Wesley was the mother to John and Charles Wesley and she was a mother who had a tough life. She was plagued with debt and illness. She had 19 children, only 10 survived. But she knew the secret of running to God in times of trouble. And she'd tell her children that when they saw her with her apron over her head, that meant she was in prayer and she couldn't be disturbed. And in the same way, we can run to him in the midst of the challenges of this season. So whether we're a mum in the midst of the ups and downs of family life, whatever our circumstances or difficulties, we can say with David, hide me in the shadow of your wings. And as we run to him, like that mother hen, God will hold us and we will hear him say, I love you, I will protect you. Under my wings, there's nothing to fear. Oh, spread your wings of mercy over me And guard my heart with true humility No shadow of the darkness pressing in Only the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings Overshadowing No refuge will I seek but God alone No hiding place save only at your throne only the cross, the blood to wash my sin Only the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings Overshadowing You are my shield i 
safe within Beneath the holy overshadowing No burden on my back Too hard to bear Only the easy load you bid me wear Until these troubles pass My heart will sing Praise for the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings Overshadowing to come on Sunday Night Live. The Reverend Charlotte Cheshire introduces her very special son, Adam, and tells us why she loves being a mum. Making sure good Christian books get to the people who need them most. And a son says thank you to his beloved mum, who no longer recognises him. But first, knowledge is power. Education is the key to opportunity and potential, and that is most certainly true for millions of people across the world who, because they can't read or write or count, are held back from getting jobs that could earn them the money that they desperately need to support their families. Women are particularly vulnerable, not just because of their lack of education, but a whole range of other challenges too. So let's hear now from Sandra Golding, who is the CEO of Feed the Minds, a charity that supports women with what they need for their families at the moment, but also provides the resources to help them build a better future. Recently, we've been working alongside our local partner organisation, Sudan Evangelical Mission, to deliver a humanitarian project providing emergency food relief to women single mothers and people living with disabilities in the districts of Mandrai in South Sudan. It is this project that I actually want to share with you. I want to share with you the story about Naomi, the young lady who's taking part in this project and how her story really moved me. And reading about Naomi, I can definitely say that she lived up to the meaning of her name, which means pleasant. Her story is one of resilience, survival and hope, certainly things that we've all been learning during this troubling times that we find ourselves in. Let me give you some context. At just 25 years old, Naomi lives with her husband, their five children, her mother and her mother-in-law, 
and also a niece and nephew. The family has very little access to nutritional food, healthcare, sanitation and employment opportunities. In her own words, Naomi says, I grew up through hardship due to war and poverty. The conflict affected us so badly. Our properties were looted, family members killed and access to health services were denied. When I was growing up, my family was also hit by the famine and poverty. I faced a lot of challenges in the past and I don't want my children to face or experience the same hardship I went through. That is why I resort to do agricultural work, to earn a living and to get something for my children's school fees. I personally like to be always happy in doing my farm work and I live a happy life with my family members and neighbours. But the money I make doesn't sustain me for long because things in the market are expensive. They currently eat one meal a day which consists of vegetables. So there's no bread or potatoes that goes alongside those vegetables. But the sad part is, is that the vegetables that they eat, if they don't cook it in the right way, they can actually be poisonous. But despite the, the shortage of food, she's hoping that there won't be a famine this coming year. But that's something that they may have to consider. But thankfully, Naomi and her family are receiving emergency food through the project that we run. So there is hope for Naomi, but there's so much more that we need to do. And it's never been more important to stand together as a global community in solidarity with women like Naomi. COVID-19 has exasperated issues in already marginalized communities. It's made the people actually have less of a voice than what they would normally have. But only together can we help to make a difference and to help them where, their need, where help is needed the most. Let's be inspired by the strength of Naomi and other women that keep going day by day, looking after their families, despite the circumstances that they find themselves in. At Feed the Minds, we, we hope to continue to support projects like what we're doing with Naomi, to make a difference not only to the women and people living with disabilities, but to those that have been marginalised and don't have that voice. Let us just take a short time to pray. Father God, we want to thank you for women like Naomi and the other women that are making such a difference in their communities. Lord, you've asked us to be the hands and your feet. So Lord, where we can't physically go, we can help by supporting people that are in situations like Naomi. May our hearts be willing and receptive to be able to make a difference to the people and to their lives. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Well, one of the aims of that charity, Feed the Minds, is to make sure that those like Naomi in some of the poorest communities in the world do have the chance to learn to read. And all of us are well aware how stimulating and enjoyable reading can be. <laughs> well, especially during lockdown, when a lot of us have found we've got far too much spare time on our hands. But getting hold of the right book can be quite a challenge, especially when the bookshops are shut. And so let's hear now of an organisation called Speaking Volumes, which makes sure that good Christian books reach the people who need them most. Hello, I'm Paula and I'm from the charity Speaking Volumes. Have you ever read a book that has challenged you to the core? I hope so. I think they're amazing. They entertain us, they educate us, they challenge and they surprise us. They can make you feel less lonely, change your mood, take you into a new world. And they while away long hours, which is what we all need at the moment with much of our other forms of entertainment somewhat curtailed. It was 50 years ago when our founder, Cecil Jackson Cole's first wife died. He found that there were no books to help him in his bereavement from a Christian perspective. So as he was familiar with setting up many charities, he set this one up with the express purpose of ensuring that nobody should ever go without the help of a Christian book when they needed it most. 
and he gifted us with shares in his estate agency, which he co-owned at the time to ensure that we never went without funds. Since then, many Christian books have been published and we've been making sure that those books can be borrowed from many different places, including public libraries, schools and prisons and hospices, churches, care homes, nurseries, anywhere really a book can be borrowed and enjoyed by a wider readership. So in the past, we've given to food banks, drug rehabilitation centres, homeless hostels and even army libraries. These days, we work very closely with many of the Christian bookshops in the UK. So whilst you apply for a grant online at our website, www.speakingvolumes.org.uk, once the grant is agreed, it's the bookshops that make all the necessary arrangements to supply your books. Now, there's a great range of modern and classic books from all of the UK Christian publishers to choose from and they've been specially selected by experts to appeal to people with little or no knowledge of the Christian faith. Having access to a good Christian book in a library could be a life-changing experience. Imagine you've got questions and you don't know where to go. Questions about how to deal with depression, illness, debt, addiction or even abuse. What if you've got questions about Christianity itself? What do people believe? What do they practice? How do you pray? A well-curated selection of books in a library can and does make a difference. With COVID and the subsequent lockdowns, now more than ever have Christian books been such a lifeline, especially in prisons where inmates have been locked down in their cells sometimes 24 hours a day with only TV for entertainment. All of their gyms, their education centres and their libraries are closed and of course they can't have visitors. Only chaplains could visit and they soon worked out that they could lend out Christian books. And so soon even the most reluctant readers were reading six, seven books a week just to counteract the monotony. So with our core funding from Andrew's estate agency and funds raised by our generous donors, we were able to supply 50 prison chaplaincies with books to help inmates find a new way in life. Schools too have explained to us how important these books are. One teacher said that the books contained a message of hope at a time when children have heard nothing of the kind over the past year. Books about death and eternal life have helped grieving children who have lost loved ones, their grandparents and their parents to COVID. We're currently supplying 100 schools with books so that when they reopen, children have some comfort and inspiration. Of course, it's been difficult whilst COVID is about. We've all had to adapt what we do and sharing the message of God's love is one of them. Many churches have had to close their doors and reach out to their community in different ways. Making Christian books available is one way to do that. If you want some ideas about some suitable books, why don't you have a look at our website? Head there too if you want to read some more stories about the impact that Speaking Volumes is making. Or if you want to make a donation to get more books into communities then there's a donation page. Maybe you'd like to see some Christian books in your library or school or church. If so, find out how to achieve this by looking at our website. And thank you for listening. And God bless you as you delve into your next good Christian book. At least it's one activity guaranteed to be COVID safe. Mothering Sunday is particularly poignant for those of us whose mums are no longer with us. But I wonder if the greatest sadness comes when the mum that you've always dearly loved can no longer remember or recognise you. My name is Peter Crumpler and I'm a Church of England minister in St Albans, Hertfordshire. And my prayer is a very personal one and it's for all mothers affected by dementia. Dear Mum, 
You raised me and now hardly know me. You gave me birth, helped me to walk, took me to school and showed me what good decisions look like. You helped me to flourish, to learn, to grow, and you released me to live my life and have a family of my own. Sadly now, dementia has descended and so many memories have drifted into mist. For many months now, I have not been able to visit your nursing home and hold your hand. I see you only through a glass darkly on a video screen or in an outside masked rendezvous with you confused by what's happening. Hopefully very soon, very soon, will we be together again. You will vaguely recognise this man who stands before you. Yet I'm grateful for all you did for me. I thank God for the upbringing I had. And I thank God for all you did to help make me me, the man that I am. This Mother's Day, may you and all mothers know God's presence with you. And may you be surrounded by his love as you are surrounded by mine. Amen. Our reflection today comes from a vicar who's been through a lot in recent times and what she has to share with us is truly inspiring. She is the Reverend Charlotte Cheshire but she's just mum to her son Adam who she says is the love of her life. For me as I'm sure for many of you Mothering Sunday isn't straightforward. For me it isn't about daffodils, sweet cards or even mother church. When I wake up on any given Mothering Sunday, the first things I hear are the beeps of the machines monitoring my son's vital signs, because I can never forget spending that first one in neonatal intensive care, sitting in a wheelchair beside my son's incubator, not knowing whether he would live or die. I had a normal healthy pregnancy, but at birth in the Shrewsbury Hospital, Adam was infected with group B strep meningitis. He was on life support in an induced coma, suffering with near constant seizures, and his swollen body was yellow with jaundice. And my own body was shattered and broken as a result of childbirth. I was in a wheelchair in agonizing pain because of a full pelvic split, and doctors didn't know if I would ever walk again. During those agonizing days, despite having a lifelong faith, I couldn't pray. I had no words to offer beyond help us. And so I listened to music instead, worship songs that became my prayers when I had none of my own to offer. And somehow, even in the midst of the worst storm I have ever known, even though God didn't fix it, God was with us. Adam survived those 23 days in hospital and I for 18 before we were discharged with the medical all clear, but with a long road of rehabilitation before us. It took me six months to learn to walk again and eventually be able to abandon my crutches. And over the next three years, Adam was diagnosed with hearing and visual impairments, autism, asthma, developmental delays, learning difficulties and challenging behaviour. This month he turns 10. Developmentally he's about four and he's the love of my life. To say that motherhood hasn't been straightforward for me would be an understatement and so neither is Mothering Sunday. But this past year has added yet another layer of complexity and grief as three weeks into the first lockdown, my husband Chris died of cancer, so I'm now a lone parent. It was only 10 months after we moved from Shropshire to Yorkshire to take up my first post as a vicar that he was diagnosed and it was already too late. Stage four, incurable, terminal. I will never forget those words and holding him as we wept in his hospital room. I cannot yet speak of the next 10 months, but as a priest, one thing I never ever expected was that I would perform the last rites for my husband. But I did. It was locked down. No one else could be there. Perhaps one day I'll tell the story of those days, but not yet. And again, during those dreadful months, I couldn't pray. 
I had no words to encompass my grief, my questions that, why me? Haven't I already been through enough? It seemed as though the heavens were made of stone and God was silent. But as my pastor, the bishop sat with me and gently told me that when I could not pray, he and the church would pray with me, for me, and on my behalf. And in an immense irony, it was eventually my beautiful son who insisted that I begin to pray once more. You see, because of his autism, routine is immensely important to him. And bedtime means shower, PJs, story, prayers, and song. The prayer is saying the Lord's Prayer together, and the song is me singing the hymn from the service of Compline, otherwise known as Night Prayer. I tried to get away with finishing after the story. Oh, how I tried. But my precious boy sat up in bed and insisted with words and his Makaton signs, time to pray, time to pray, mummy. And so slowly I began to say the Lord's Prayer stumbling, hesitating, weeping, but for him, I did it. And then more slowly still came the song. Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. <laughs> Mothering Sunday for me is about life, death, praying, not being able to pray, desperately seeking God, and ultimately finding God in the encouragement of a child and in the whisper saying, I'm with you. I wonder what Mothering Sunday means to you. I pray that whether it's a straightforward celebration, either of mothering or mother church, that it has been a special day for you. But if like me, it is far more complex for a whole range of reasons, then I pray that God has been and will continue to be with you. Because ultimately, despite the many, many challenges that have come my way, I'm confident that even as God mothers me, she's shown me how to mother my son, then and now, because she knit him together in my womb, and he is fearfully and wonderfully made exactly as he is. So may God the Father, who gave birth to all creation, keep you in his care. May Christ, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, strengthen you in his service. May the Holy Spirit, who broods like a mother over her children, fill you with love and joy and hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Well, you know, it's not easy to talk about such uh, painful and personal experiences with the generosity that Charlotte Cheshire did then in her reflection. So thank you to her and thanks to you for watching Sunday Night Live this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, if you have any comments or thoughts or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you and you'll find out how to contact us at the end of the programme. But let's finish as we started by marking St. Patrick's Day, which comes up on Wednesday this week. So to sing us out, here is the new Irish choir and orchestra. And from me, Pam Rhodes, I hope you have a great week ahead and that you come back and join me for Sunday Night Live next weekend. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves and each other, won't you? Bye bye now.
And if you've enjoyed Sunday Night Live, don't forget to press the subscribe and like buttons so that your device will offer you future editions each week and recognise that this is a programme of interest to you and others.